Director of Social Media for Bomb Mattel. And today we have a very special guest, Lena McKenzie. Hi, welcome, Lena. Hi. Hi. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna be talking about reflexology today. So you're gonna be starting even teaching work reflexology classes in, in national, right? Not nationally, but um, it's on its way. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I can definitely see it happening. So, can you give us a little bit of a background how you got involved in massage then? Oh, massage and body work all together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, massage started for me back in 2001. I went to a trade school and received my associate's degree and uh, started kind of going through, you know, the motions and my first uh, a, a day spa and about a year later I went into a chiropractic setting and throughout that whole time uh, Body Rhythms was created and that was a, a journey and still evolving. Um, that journey kind of started out as a traveling therapist because of low overhead, right? Yeah, <laughs> Um, then we went into uh, a home-based business after we built our house, and then we did about four years there. My husband started saying, you know, you've been pushing us out of the house for too long. So uh, recently, about three years ago, we cut our first storefront, and it went from a sole, pri um, sole proprietor piece, and now it's got three different therapists that are working for us as well. So we're expanding as we're speaking. And um, how did you get involved in reflexology then? Oh, reflexology has been something I've self-studied for years, even before massage uh, therapy school. It's actually kind of fun to look back in the library and see all the different books that I've created over time. Um, I've always loved working on the feet, probably because I have sore feet all the time and I have scoliosis. <laughs> so I didn't know back then that there was a lot of correlation with that. Um, but reflexology training actually took place, place for me back in 2008, and I went to Green Bay over a year, um, took five different trips, and I studied for 200 hours, and became a certified reflexologist back in 2009, and um, I don't know, it's one of my favorites. So um, reflexology training can vary from place to place then, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they do reflexology training on uh, both feet, hands, and ears. Uh, I'm certified in foot, and uh, I know how to do the hands. I choose not to because they're too readily available. Yeah. Yeah, on an air, uh, airplane, do it for, you know. Um, and then ears are pretty cool, too. And do you use any tools at all with reflexology, usually, the, the way you were taught? You know, not on my clients. But we do have something like this. I know that you just kind of came out with your own, too, yep. that you designed out of the maple, was it? Yep. Yeah, um, but this is one of my things that I, I do on myself for my self-care reflexology um, pieces, but I have a rule, rule, rule of thumb if you want. I don't do tools or use tools on clients. My tools are my, my fingers. So rule of thumb, but no pun intended, right? <laughs> no pun intended at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Later on, we're going to have someone bare their soul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you will not heal them, will you? <laughs> you won't heal them, no. Yeah. <laughs> we could go on forever, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how, how far um, back would reflexology say what it goes then? Oh, there are archetypes like everywhere. If you look back in some of the books, you're going to find, um, you know, the Egyptian tombs that have the line of people working on their feet and their shoulders and their hands. And um, I'd go at least 4,000 years, if not more. Yeah, and has it changed much over the years, would you say, or, or has it gone more mainstream, would you say? I would definitely say mainstream, although in Minnesota, I'm kind of one of the very few who do it. Um, if you cross the border into Wisconsin, there's a lot of massage therapists that are reflexologists as well. We just don't have that training out here, and that's why I'm here. Yeah, because I definitely noticed that, too, in Minnesota. I mean, even in people when they advertise massage stuff, um, it's reflexology usually isn't in there. Yeah, it's just, um, I don't think that it's a uh, modality that people, a lot of therapists miss the feet, and, you know, I think that's a, a shame, but I don't do uh, chair massage out there to promote, to, um, promote my business. I do reflexology and uh, spread the awareness that way, and it benefits everybody, young to old. Um, it helps aid a lot of different health benefits and different pathologies and diseases out there. Um, a lot of discomfort, and 
you know, everybody's on their feet day in and day out. So it really, truly has a, a place in body work. So um, usually when um, chair massage events, you actually bring, bring your reflexology chair then? Yeah, I'm known as the foot lady, and I'm the first one to usually be signed up before I'm actually done even setting up my booth. Okay. They have to be booked all the way through. Yeah, and, um, this, and the thing is, when you go in public for chair massage, I mean, it's just mostly chair massage all the time what you see, but so many people are walking, it just makes sense, you know? Well, and absolutely, and we have a lot of, um, you know, American, we're all about vanity, so we wear the high heels, and we have a lot of flatter and fat shyness because of it, um, you know, it goes on and on and on, and people have hip issues because of the shoes that they're wearing, and people have orthotics, and, you know, there's a lot of band-aids that we put out there, and uh, I don't know, my reflexology instructor told us that if we had a reflexologist inside every chiropractic office, their adjustments would stand longer as well. Yeah, because everything starts at the feet, you know? It's <laughs> yeah, it's the foundation, yep. right? If we have a messed up foundation, then, you know, the house is going to crumble. Yep. <laughs> you know? and, and how long are the treatments usually for reflexology, would you say? Well, the demos that we do out there, whether it's in the hospital or different, you know, Relay for Life stuff, I have a huge heart for oncology. Um, those are usually about 10 minutes, and I only work on one foot so they can actually see the difference, and that's pretty cool full because in 10 minutes less or less, you know, they can actually reap the benefits of feeling like they're walking on the pillow. They see the, um, the, the ankle is kind of shrinking down, if you would, and um, that's just the demos. But if we're going to do like a full onset reflex treatment, typically it's about an hour, and that includes a foot soak, the reflex, and then we end up with a little bit of foot massage. Um, my 90-minute session does a foot soak, reflex, and then we end up doing... Um, you know, after the massage, we have a mud wrap as well, so it helps pull out more de um, of the toxins. And, and I've had quite a few students in the past who are actually scared of um, massaging the feet. Um, how do you get them over that fear? I can wrap theirs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that they understand once they start realizing the, the anatomy involved. You know, there's so many different bones in there. There's, um, you know, 19 different. 19 to 20 different muscles. There's over 26 bones if you count the, the little extra one that no one ever counts. But um, I think they realize that, you know, you're going to have hairy backs and you're going to have dirty feet. You're going to have smelly feet. You're going to have to help those feet. Um, but there's no better way than to get them right in there. And I think once they receive the footwork themselves, they realize that they, they shouldn't chintz out on that area. Yep. And, and and then even when a lot of people get a lot of training in reflexology, it seems like they just, just do not offer it much either. Why is that, you think? I'm not quite sure, but I know that my students probably get a little bit more of a enforcement in that area. <laughs> it's one of my favorite passions. Um, I think there's a misconception out there maybe, too, that people are afraid of the acupressure. You know, they come in thinking massage is going to feel good, and foot massage just do. But this is acupressure pressure. It's not going to be um, light. We're not doing needles because that's acupuncture, but we are still using our thumb and we're getting all those reflexes. And, um, you know, everybody is going to have um, circulation issues. They're going to have adaptation issues. There's going to be some of the alarm points are going to be apparent. Um, so I think there, there's a I don't know how to say it. There's going to be a little bit of confusion between what reflex is versus massage. And reflex is obviously a little bit more painful because they bring the body, you know. We're there to help them, and I don't know. But I think that once you work through some of those issues, it's not as painful as people believe. And, and for myself, when I had my business, whenever somebody came in for a half an hour massage, I would always at least try to talk them in five to ten minutes of foot massage just because I got sick of looking back so, at, at backs all the time. You know? <laughs> well, that, and it's right there. It's correlating to what the spine's doing, right? Yeah. We hit the foundation again. We're going to help alleviate the back issues without having to hurt the back. Um, that's the cool thing about it. It really does mirror the whole body. And you, you said uh, you sometimes um, clean or uh, foot soaks and stuff with reflexology before you even start. Is that really recommended, too? I think more for our own senses, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, in the public, we don't usually have access to all the water. And so we have a lot of um, tea tree oils and peppermint oils. Um, 
you know, things that are going to disinfect and take care of all those fungi out there. Yep. <laughs> Oh, you go forever, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, <but> exactly. <laughs> and um, with the reflexology um, treatments, is there a certain population that it's really geared towards, would you say? You know, I think that there's a definite population that I concentrate on, and that's probably more the oncology. Um, if they're undergoing chemo and radiation, there's that misconception of, is massage safe? Is it going to, you know hinder them as far as spreading the cancer and whatnot. And as massage therapists, I know better, but um, sometimes we haven't reached all those doctors out there yet who may not be aware, but um, they understand that reflexology is not going to hurt them, and it does actually help them digest their medication better. It helps them get rid of their nausea. Um, so I would say definitely oncology. However, if you have a child who's born who's not walking properly, or has some cranial issues, um, you can adjust their, you know, their reflexes and their feet, and it'll affect that area. We're not going to let you touch maybe their head. Um, and parents want to help as much as possible. So really, to hone down into one population, I don't think so. I think everybody deserves some reflex. Yeah, and um, recently I was in the Philippines, and reflexology, I would say, is, is they, the main treatment that they actually use over there. And they're even talking about um, people with club foot and um, reflexology on a regular basis will actually help um, the deformities and stuff like that, too. I mean, as long as they get them really when they're really young, too. Yeah, I mean, anything with body work, as long as you're touching them when they're young, you have a better chance because you're not working through all of that trauma. Yep. You know? Um, I think this is a really cool thing because um, when I see the oncology client myself, a lot of times their spouses are bringing them because they are so, um, you know, they're coming right back from treatment and they're not able to drive or they're too weak to be around or be awake throughout their whole session. So this is a modality that I like to, you know, have someone come in originally and pay and then I also use the session to go ahead and train whoever's going to be close to them to create more of a bond and they can turn us into a nightly ritual. And um, when it comes to end of life, it's super important that I'm not the person that's connecting with them. It's someone else that's more loved. Yep. So you'll actually train them to actually get some massages too on reflexology and stuff at, for the end of the life? And Absolutely. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we train also, but um, yeah, this is, it, body work is not meant to be shared, or it's not meant to be housed within my head as far as my knowledge. It is really true. It's meant to um, touch everyone. So that's my big thing is... Sorry, I'm getting all emotional. Yep. <laughs> I touched one person, and if I can teach someone else to touch another one and another one, you know how it goes, that yep. whole chain reaction. We end up touching the world. Yep, exactly. And and then do you ever, when you um, reflexology treatments, do you massage both the feet at the same time ever, or is it just most, most is that too much overstimulating for them, would you say? or? I might do certain pinpoints. Uh, if, say, like the kidneys are really taxed, I might go ahead and, um, you know, kind of check in with one or the other, but typically, and there's some, um, there's a little bit of fight in this about what, which foot you start with. Some people that are more energetically driven will say, go ahead and start with the right or their left foot because of the left going around um, and, you know, receiving and then the output on the, the right foot. But uh, typically, I will start with the left foot. I'm sorry, I'm going to get you all confused. I will start with their right foot. My left hand starts with the work. And because that's, that's what's going to um, initiate the digestive system. And lots of people, and especially American society, has huge digestive issues, whether it's IBS, um, Crohn's, or just regular, you know, they're not eating the right food. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> back them up, we want to assist them. Uh, and then with reflexology, too, um, do you use, um, like, oils, lotions, creams, um, different kind of products and stuff on the body, on, on the feet? <clears throat> I also, you know, have to talk about Bond by Tall. Yeah. <laughs> no plug there. No. no um, I used to do a dry, a dry, like, tapioca flour or cornstarch to start with, but we always use the essential oils and um, other things in the foot soaks, bath salts, mineral salts, Epsom salts. Um, things to alleviate the pain, but the foot balm from Bon Vital is really awesome. The peppermint oil to help with the, the fun guys. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, 
pretty, it's, as far as products, it's not an expensive modality. Um, you know, you just want to make sure that they're clean and your hygiene and is in your fingernails being really short. Um, no polish on your nails so you don't have anything, you know, coming off with the essential oils that you're using. Um, but I really don't do too much fluff out there. Yep. And, and then um, is, it, is it, let's say they're injured in one foot, um, is it better to focus on the injured foot first or the uninjured, would you say? Well, funny that you should ask that. Actually, I wouldn't even touch the foot. It's uh, because the reflexology pieces also mirror the body and the hands and the feet and the ears, depending on, you know, if it's an acute fracture or something in the foot, you're not going to want to touch that. So, or if they have some warts or something and they just don't want you to be around that foot, um, I say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but I can hit the same reflexes with the hand just as well as I can hit with the foot. Or, you know, if it's an injury that's closer to, you know, their issue is more um, head related, I can hit that much faster with the reflex through the fingertips than the toes. So you don't have to touch just the feet. And do you ever, um, I, I've seen people use like toothpicks for the ears. Yeah. Everybody's different. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are clamps that you can use as well. Um, but, you know, I guess I would really like to do, I do a lot of with different cupping also. Um, but there's these really tiny little clip, clamps out there that you can actually purchase that will do the acupressure. Um, you know, there's, toothpicks wouldn't be my, unless you're getting the rounded ones maybe. Yep, the rounded end ones, yep. <laughs> I guess I, if it was for me, I, you know, I've never personally used them, but I guess I wouldn't be opposed to them. Yeah. And then with reflexology, um, other contraindications, would you say? There are. Um, very few, though, compared to the rest of the body work world out there. Um, if we have lesions or bruises or if we have, um, let me see, gout. Gout is one of them. But other than that, it's just about their sensitivity, their range of motion, you know, if they have lack of range of motion in the wrists or the, sorry, the foot, um, then you're going to be able to hit just about everything. And that's why one thing when it is uh, someone who's undergoing a lot of medications or surgery, reflexology is pretty safe. Yeah, because I've read that too a lot and a lot of people have explained that. I mean, one of the safest things is reflexology. That's what's nice about it. Yeah. And everybody loves their feet being worked on, right? Yep, <laughs> the majority of the times. <laughs> <laughs> what about for the ticklish clients? <laughs> well, that's a good, that's an awesome question. Um, reflexology is not a foot massage, so you're not going to have that nice effleurage going through. You're going to actually do the acupressure through there as well. So if there is a, the ticklish sensation, you're going to be able to stunt that by the pressure itself. And that's a fun part where, you know, you actually can convince a lot of people to actually get footwork because of the reflex movements that I do. And what is that? Is that a uh, um, clay foot or something? No, this is actually, oh my gosh, this is such a dirty little foot. But <laughs> everywhere. My mom used to have this out of um, her trunk around uh, Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving, Halloween. I'm so nervous. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thing has been outside and hiding underneath, like, the, the garage door, you know? Yep. And uh, it's been a practical thing in our family. My mom is kind of stick that way. But I said, hey, Mom, I'm taking reflexology classes. Can I have that? And she's like, well, let me find it. And it's been mine ever since. So I've had them since around, I don't know, 2007, 2008. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, most massage therapists actually collect, like, massage tools or things like that, but you collect feet. So. <laughs> I, I collect a lot of tools too, but yeah, yeah I love this little guy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I know there's some online training and stuff for refle reflexology. Do you recommend those kind of things or at least for a, a great basis or something? Or My rule of thumb really is self-study as much as you can before you spend that money on continued, continued education. Um, you're not going to get I don't think you're going to get the practicality that you need when, unless you're right there in a the classroom. However, self-studying and the memorization, there's a lot of memorization that comes with the feet. Um, I definitely say do the online stuff. Do some book work and, you know, start doing your own soul searching. Yeah, um, but I'm bummed. You know? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, I would encourage that, absolutely. The lay people out there especially, you know, they just hear about it. They may not feel comfortable to ask someone or they may not be able to afford a training, you know. Um, so that's what the libraries are out there for. Yeah, because I remember um, back in the 90s when I went through massage school, we actually had about 100 hours of training in reflexology, and that was kind of rare because most schools, I mean, they might have a day at that and stuff, it seems. Mine didn't have anything, yeah. So that's why we were searching and searching, and finally Green Bay was close enough place to go, and I trekked out there for five times, and Lambeau Field's a pretty cool place. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and a tax write-off, too. So. <laughs> But it looks like you've gotten tons of training. I mean, um, doula training, raindrop technique, uh, myofascial release, uh, sh shoulder pain protocol, um, craniosacral therapy, up ledger, you name it. I mean, you've got a little bit of everything in there. So. <laughs> well, a little bit of a continued education junkie that way. Yeah. <laughs> Are some you... people like to drink, some feel like to smoke. I'm a continued education person. And look at it, I mean, it's always the money is coming back to you in a way, too. So you're investing it, and then, I mean, look at all that information you're getting out there. So. Yep, absolutely. And, and do, I, you, do you tie um, some of those other modalities into reflexology, or do you keep that totally separate usually? I tie reflexology to every other modality. I don't know that I tie other modalities into uh, reflexology. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, definitely. <laughs> I mean, even with the raindrop therapy and stuff, um, it c can it be done with the feet at all? I know um, I've seen it done on the back and things like that, but can it be done in other parts of the body? Raindrop actually has a Vitaflex motion to it, so you're actually touching all of the spinal reflexes all the way through. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that or not either, yeah. but um, you know, Vitaflex has a certain technique where you're going to be rolling into the medial part of the foot, into the arch, working those reflexes for the spine. So, and the oils are awesome because you're going to help realign the spine much faster. So incorporating raindrop and uh, reflex would actually be a good combo. And is reflexology and zone therapy different things, or do they cross over? Or? You know, I've kind of had these uh, discussions with some people who are zone therapy there, and there's a lot of similarities. I just think that with anything else, you know, you have myofascial release, and then it kind of points it to some cranial sacral therapy as well. Um, you come to a certain point in body work where everything is related, and um, I think everybody needs to have their name on it so they can token it themselves and, you know, how that works. Um, I think there's very a lot of similarities. Uh, we do still use the zones in reflexology training. I go off of the Ingham method. Um, Barbara and Ken Coons developed that piece. I have their charts behind us. I don't know if you can see those or not. Yep. But, you know, I have a hand in the foot chart. Um, so, yeah, I guess they would overlap. And one question that comes up sometimes is, um, I mean, when somebody has a really tender spot on their foot and let's say it's their kidneys or something, do you actually tell the client that um, this is your kidney reflex and stuff and does it get it confusing to them? You have to use the word reflex afterwards in order to save your um, your behind. Okay. <laughs> um, we don't want to diagnose and we don't want to treat or, you know, prescribe. Obviously, we have the same scope of practice as massage therapists out there. And uh, we want to make sure that we're not sending someone to the doctor in an urgency case saying, the therapist worked on my kidneys and they said I have, you know, I need to have some, I don't know, some flushings or whatever. I don't know. They might have anemia. They might have um, lots of stressors that are kind of hinging on to the kidneys and the adrenals and the lymphatic system all together. But um, we will ask questions around that specific area. And I, a lot of times what I'll do to save myself as Gan, uh, because I'm not a magic person that can't read minds and I don't know their health history, I have them fill it out, but I don't look at it because I like to test myself with this modality. Um, say their kidneys popped up. And I would be like, oh, wow, I'm noticing some tender stuff here. This is really crystallized over here. Do you feel that? Is it painful? I usually try to get like an alarm state versus, a, you know, how long has this been around and start figuring out is it an acute thing or has it been something that, you know, they've been dealing with for, for a while. Um, but I'm very careful about diagnosing, and I will usually give them a chart, and I'll highlight that area so they can go home with it self care techniques for them, 
and they can start correlating, well, let's see, my kidneys are kind of going through this because of this medication or, you know, different things like that. But I'm very, 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 I don't know, very cautious about telling them, hey, your lungs are coming up. I might ask them, hey, have you been a smoker? Or do you have asthma? Do you have bronchitis? Or have you had a history of that? And then, and then for reflexology, is the health form and also soap notes different, would you say, than regular massage? The intake form can be very similar to massage. However, the soap notes, um, will you grab one of those real quick for me? Uh, we've created our own, and I share it with the school, um, all my therapists, in, um, you know, in my office and my students use these. They're very helpful because you are only working solely on the foot. So you're going to want to have something like this, and I'll show a snapshot to you real quick. Um, I don't know if you can oh, see yep. that. It looks We're, good. You know, the diaphragm line, the anatomical waist line, the heel line, then you have the tenon line. Um, and then the dorsal part of the foot, you're going to kind of pinpoint the hip, the lymphatic, you know, everything else is going to be marked there. So you can mark things like bruises and lacerations and cuts and, uh, you know, scrapes and fungus and bunions and bunionettes, all that fun stuff on the foot chart as well. But the soap piece actually stays the same, but the diagrams that they're going to chart on are very different. This is made by yours truly. Okay. <laughs> So, um, do you, what about um, when you go on, um, vis I mean, like chair massage uh, events or things like that, do you actually use um, your soap notes and just charting too and stuff? Yeah, real briefly though, I, don't, I won't do the whole um, SOAP charting, I just chart on the foot. And I have a legend that I follow, so if they do come into the office later, I can pull that up and create the file for them and kind of start comparing notes. Um, it's a really quick, you know, 10 minutes of service, but you can really find out a lot in a very short amount of time. Is it hard convincing people for reflexology, though? Not for me. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I, I do a lot of it for free, and we might charge for the dollar a minute type of deal, but that's usually out in the public where we're doing the donations goes towards uh, Relay for Life um, in many of those cases. And, uh, you know, I do some volunteering at the Monticello Hospital, which is a hospital really close in my town. And, and we also have um, the Buffalo Hospital, which is a, just a town over. They contract me out twice a year for their memo parties. Okay. So I touch a lot of people's feet. And I know at some of the big trade shows and conferences, they actually have um, a sanctuary, it's called. Did your students participate in that a few years ago? No, not ours, but other campuses. Yep. Yeah, we're one of many campuses in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Utah. Yeah, yep. we missed you. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, it makes so much sense, especially those trade show areas. I mean, it's concrete and just a layer of carpeting, and there's no padding at all. So it's <laughs> well, and they're there for like 10 to 12 hours, you know. So absolutely. Yep. And um, do you see getting more training in the near future and stuff for reflexology, or is this your passion? Would you say? And it's one of my many passions. Um, I think I'm done with my continuing education in, as far as reflexology goes, as I'm trying to incorporate um, doing those trainings for other massage therapists. I want to start certifying massage therapists into being certified for reflexology. That way we can kind of spread the, um, the help around Minnesota specifically. But then, you know, obviously we have the nationwide goals as well. Um, but that curriculum is already developed. We're just waiting to submit it. I just want to make sure someone else goes over it and fine tune. Um, I missed anything. So I'm done. But I have clients who are teaching me every week. You know, one of the very first clients that I was um, actually privileged to work with had stage four colon cancer. And um, he was actually an associate or a, well, he was a colleague. He was a co-worker and he was an instructor of mine. And uh, we found out that he was only 52 years old when he passed away. And I had 14 months with him. Um, he had never had a colonoscopy until that time. And he found out he had full blown for, you know, stage four cancer. And six feet were really cool to work on in order to get my training. Because now I know what, you know, ill feet feel like. And you can actually feel the cancer spreading. Um, so as a therapist, that's really like, woohoo, we're making waves. But then as a human, it's really, really humbling and, um, you know, you get that sympathetic and empathetic role. 
Yeah, and sometimes with um, chemotherapy and stuff, I mean, do you have to wear gloves sometimes with certain um, products that they're actually using and stuff? Yeah, I learned the hard way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, my reflexology instructor obviously was in Green Bay, and he was an email away, but, you know, as a, a new certified reflexologist, I knew it all, right? Yeah. Uh, so I would work on this gentleman uh, about two days after his chemo and found out real quickly without gloves, my thumbs were going to be eaten away. Uh, and it happened a number of times before I was like, hey, you know, really, what's going on? So I talked to the doctors, and they said, you know, if you do it within about a four- to six-hour window, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, but, yeah, I never worked with gloves with him. However, other clients, when they come in, you know, within a week after their treatment, then we're wearing gloves. Yep. And for your classes that you're going to be teaching, um, is that going to be a one-day or two-day or three-day or how long? going to run in the two-day segment, and we're going to have, um, I'm going to run it very closely to what my instructor did. He no longer teaches reflexology. He's moved on to worldly things, um, and he's a mentor of mine, so I'm actually going to copy his, not copy, I'm going to tweak his system. Um, I'm going to have a year-long program. It's going to have five visits, and they're going to have uh, three whole weekend classes, two weekends of workshops, and then the other 100 hours are going to be very similar to you know, charting, working on your clients, reporting, and figuring out your case studies. Oh, so you're including case studies in there then? Absolutely. Yep, that's so nice. I mean, we need we need a lot more of that. <laughs> yes. Yep. Absolutely. Research is important. Yep. And th then um, with refl I mean, will, will you be covering the hands and the ears and stuff too then? Yeah, but I'm not sure if I'm going to certify in the hands and the ears, just because I really drew, I really believe that the feet don't get enough attention as it is. Um, I really want to focus on the foot reflexology. You know, I'll introduce those other pieces. Um, maybe I'll even look at the toothpick piece. I'm not quite sure. I have to try that on myself before I try it on anybody else. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> from your teeth to yeah. your ear. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. Maybe we can find another tool for that, Ryan. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'll stick with you for now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then with reflexology, can it be performed, um, do you ever perform it when they're in the prone position too, like on a, a regular massage table, or, or do you Absolutely. prefer the re reflexology chairs? Or I like, the, I like the chair. However, we do have a setup for you for you too because uh, we know that we are diverse and we like to have different styles. But uh -huh. this is a kind of a, um, a table setup right here where you would actually have client's head right here and then you would actually drop off their feet right here so they would be exposed as such. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one foot person. <laughs> yep, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a couple different ways and when I'm incorporating reflexology with other Massages, absolutely, we do prone and supine, um, you know, but otherwise, I think there's no better way than to assess both feet in a chair, just like this. So, say hi, Angela. Hello. <laughs> this is a nice chair. It's not like on chairs that you see at Cabela's. This is actually a reflexology chair. It's made by Faulkner. Okay. Um, it the... has a special hinge component where it's going... Pardon? Does it have a cup holder, too? I know some of them, they actually make the cup holders. This one does not, no. but we could. We yeah. We're going to encourage lots of water drinking anyways. But, um, yeah. you know, and I don't know about you, but I do a lot with essential oil, and we start talking about how, how we can facilitate that detoxification process a little bit longer post their treatment, you know. Um, we may be talking about some lemon essential oil as well. Um, but, yeah. This is my preferred method right here, is to work right here. Okay. And then, do you give free demos, too? I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this would be a good time to figure out what we're going to be using. Um, obviously, you're going to want something like this for a foot soap. It's actually, do you guys want to bring her day? Down real quick, and it can slow for feet quick. Um, we have the cornstarch, which actually I used to have the flour, and then um, in the foot soap, we're just going to add some salts, and we're going to use some Bon Vital eucalyptus and peppermint oil. Got to get rid of the fun guys. Yeah. <laughs> Not on the party. Um, but yeah, very simple, and this is not that much 
more room than a typical chair setup, you know? I'm going to move the camera just a little bit so you can see. Okay. The, can you see that? Yep. Are you you're locking up a little bit? Hello? They're doing like a brand new session. Oh, sorry. If we're starting a brand new client, can you hear me? Yep. I wonder if it's because I have my thing tilted. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear okay. you now. Yep. Sorry, I won't tilt the camera again. Okay. okay. If they're a brand new client and they have intake paperwork to fill out anyways, I'm doing their foot soap while they're doing the paperwork. So they're kind of hanging out and I'm like, okay, come on, do your paperwork faster. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a nice way to make sure that they're clean. So they have about five to ten minutes of doing their paperwork. And again, I don't look at that intake paperwork just because I want to make sure I'm testing my own skills and I like to read the body through the feet um, but do you want to know anything about the way that we look at the foot or yeah um, do, do you do um, do a visual beforehand or what how, how do you yeah how do you evaluate the feet beforehand okay yeah we are looking for some visual cues we want to uh, first of all range of motion you know look at them feel them feeling for puffiness uh, you're looking for discolorations, you're looking for any of those uh, complicated pieces that might be around also, but uh, you're basically making sure that everything is working enough where your, your pressure is going to be okay. Uh, but then, you know, if I'm going to use this as an example, I look at the anatomy, I don't know if not everybody knows the anatomy within the body, so that's a very important piece to have um, so you can recognize what you're touching, when you're touching something, you're finding something. Um, so we're going to look first at the five zones. One, two, three, four, five, and they're just straight lines. Um, then we have the diaphragm line right here. So basically anything above the diaphragm line that's in the body, this is the left foot, so we're going to have the heart, part of the lungs, and then we're going to have the um, esophagus right here. This is the brain reflex. We have the pituitary gland. We have the parathyroid and thyroid gland here. We also have the sinus reflexes here. Um, this is going to map out exactly what the body's picture of the body and, and you know, create it on the feet and kind of did it like an egg slicer view. You would have um, the ears right here, and the eyes come in underneath the second and third zone. Um, underneath the diaphragm line, you're going to have an di uh, anatomical waistline as well. So that's your next guide point. And anything that's underneath the diaphragm, but before the um, anatomical waistline, you're going to have uh, stomach and the pancreas and the spleen reflexes. Very important to say reflexes. Yep. Um, actually have the organs in the foot. But we have anatomical waistline down to the heel line. We're going to talk about some of the um, digestive system. It starts on the right side with the ascending and transverse colon, then it moves down into the descending colon, into the sigmoid colon, and intermixly there. Intermixly, I think I made my own word. <laughs> we have our own language here. Um, we have small intestines in there as well, and then on the bottom of the heel, we're going to have the reflex for the sciatic nerve. We have the spinal column all the way through here. The dorsal aspect of the foot is going to show um, the thoracic inlet right here. We always call it X marks the spot. Can't see what this is. Yep. Oops. One second here. Okay. Technical stuff. Okay. Then we have the lymphatic system right here. Also, we have the breast and the upper chest reflected. And then down here is the lower back. Um, one really cool thing about finding stuff on people's feet and scaring them or surprising them is the reproductive area. You can find out if there's impotence. You can find out if they're having issues um, becoming pregnant. You can find out if they have cysts on their ovaries. Um, there's a lot of really cool things that you can ask, and they'll be like, how do you know so much about me? Um, and we don't. We're just listening to the feet. Uh, we have the ovary and testicle re um, reproductive stuff right over on the lateral malleolus. Then we have the fallopian tube reflexes, a little rainbow right across the malleoli here. And the medial malli, we have um, the uterus and the prostate reflexes. And then we have the hip and the cuboid notch right here. So. There's a lot of anatomical stuff that you can find on the foot, and as long as you know your anatomy and you know what those functions of those pieces are doing, you can really have a really informative session within an hour for sure. Yeah, because I, I know some charts, um, most all the charts are the same, but they're different. 
Um, have you run into that? And is there certain charts that you usually go by more? Yeah, and there's some fun charts out there where they just put the visuals, you know, like uh, here's the eyes, and they put the eyes on the foot. And um, yeah. there are a lot of, vis you know, differences. I like the Inga method just because it is anatomically correct, and it makes it a lot easier to really remember and figure out. Um, and it becomes really accurate when you are talking to these clients. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do a demo for you. I'm going to move okay. the camera down just a shelf. Okay. That way it's not closing up on you. Yep. <laughs> I know. Bit of a view here. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work. We didn't check out that piece. I'm going to get a full. All right. We're going to utilize our technology stuff here. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> okay, so I'm going to put her. This is Angela. She's one of our Minnesota School of Business uh, massage therapy students right now. That's where I teach full time, and then we have the practice, and we're going to do the trainings on the side. So. Hi, Angela. Black. <laughs> <laughs> do you love reflexology, Angela? Yeah. Okay. We had a little little spill because I didn't replace or remove the the water. But water's never killed any of us. We're all nice. <laughs> oh, so what we're gonna do? We're going to make sure that her foot, she's all nice and clean. Okay. Dry it off a little bit. Get her used to our touch. And does that help kind of desensitize in a way too for technicalishness? I mean, that's a challenge. I love a challenge. <laughs> um, we're going to start with just a little bit of powder. And I always start with a little shake, shimmy shake. Now, it's very important if they are locked up in the, the calves here that we're going to have to make sure that we go ahead and um, loosen that up because all the muscles that are in the calves, as you know, are connected to the feet. So we have to loosen that up as well. But we're going to start looking for cues. And a lot of times I'll just start going into dorsiflexion and looking. I don't know if you can see that or not, but she's got some speckling going on in flex areas here. Can you see that? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to check for things like that. And that's just a little interruption in circulation. And it could be something that is more bronchial. It could be something that's more environmental. There's lots of different things it could be. So we're going to start opening up the nerve area down in the lumbar vertebrae, reflex. Basically, we are working on nerve endings, and that's how this works. Is a, it's a whole recognized pattern. You're sending signals to the brain, and then it starts figuring out what's impaired, if you will. Um, we are using a thumb movement that's kind of like a, a little inchworm. And it's very hard for most therapists to do just this. They want to use their staff joint. And if you do that, you're going to end up hurting the phenar muscle. And uh, no massage therapist or body worker wants to hurt their muscle. No. <laughs> Funny me. <laughs> but we're going to start with, I'm just kind of zipping through because it's obviously a demo, but spent time right here. She seems like she might have some cervical issues, so this would be a good time to ask her, do you have neck degeneration, do you have, and I don't know about her feet, <laughs> but um, I have worked on her once in the past. I don't memorize her, but um, she might have some headaches from that or something else going on. I might ask about if she sees a chiropractor, um, but, you know, basically when I work the spine reflex, then I'm going to go into the five zones of the big toe or the hallux, and we're going to basically have an image of the whole body right in the, or the whole left side of the body, I should say, right in the hallux here. Um, again, we're going to work the five zones, work around, you know, circumduct around the hallux. We're going to work one pass on each of the toes here. And then I'm going to concentrate on opening up the solar plexus region, also working the diaphragm reflex. If they're having a hard time breathing because they are ticklish, then we can relax them by working that whole diaphragm area. And you know, I'm double checking to see if she's stiff right through here. If that happens, I intermittently go ahead and put it with some more shimmy shake, shimmy shake, get them relaxing. And if they're chatty, 
I'm not chatting back. I need to listen to their feet. I'm not going to be listening and, you know, taking part in conversations so much unless it's medical base where I'm asking questions. Um, once I'm done doing those little helper toes, I'm going to go ahead and do a 45 degree motion along. There we go. We got a little bit of something in the shoulder reflex there. Then I would actually compare the other side to see if she has more, um, you know, things I'm trying to feel for. They might be like shards of glass or pebbles or um, just little crystals. That, that's how I, you know, describe the palpation, what I'm feeling. But I would do that. Um, so she has some really crunchy stuff going on in the shoulder reflex here. That's her shoulder on her left. So I would actually go ahead and start searching on the right. See. And I'm a big person on, hey, how do you sleep? Can I guess how you sleep? I like to be right. Um, but I have a 50-50 chance. <laughs> yeah. so, so we're going to 45s. And if I find anything that I really think is really needed some extra help, we're going to highlight that. No different than looking at a book and reading it and then highlighting that as well. Um, we would go over that a few times. But it doesn't need to be like repetitive to the point where they're in pain. If you touched it a couple times, you're good. Basically, if they have anything stopping that, that nerve impingement, whether it's muscular, skeletal, a surgery might have happened in the knee, something like that, um, you know, that's going to impede on the, the traveling from the nerve from the foot to the actual spinal column where it starts. So some interruption in there where we're going to stop and say, hey, how about this area? You know, if I say this is what's going this is what I'm feeling, this is like in the lung reflex, they might stop and say, well, you know, I've had bronchitis, or I just got done with a huge cold, and then we'll say, okay, that might be it. We never want to diagnose. That's super important. Um, but you can find a lot out, and it's kind of scary. It's where therapists know it's coming to play. Yep. You know, right now my stuff and my, my speculations, and they don't see that, and it's not court order to see the therapist notes versus the soap notes. Um, but if they start finding something out or they go back to the doctor and they say, oh, my gosh, this, you remember you said something about this area? Well, if I wrote it down in my um, therapist notes, I can pull it out and say, guess what? <laughs> Didn't want to share that with you because I thought maybe it's too scary. But we have it dated for this, this you know, month back. We can be accurate. And all you have to do is be accurate a few times, and then you have a huge referral base. So if you're listening and you know your anatomy, you can be very successful with this body work. And then with, um, so the shin area and the calf area is considered our scope of practice and ref reflexology, would you say? Some people might go ahead and uh, say no, but yes, actually it is. Um, and since I'm a massage therapist as well, nationally certified massage therapist, um, you know, I have the authority and the scope to go ahead and do that. However, chiropractors work in the spine, but they can also manipulate some of the stuff around the paraspinals in order to get a better adjustment. Um, pedicurists can go ahead and do their feet where they're allowed, but they're also going to massage your, your calf. You know, it depends on how black and white you want that line. Um, but reflexology, you know, since the muscles attach to the feet and the different bones in the feet, and they originate from up here, it is in our scope. Okay. So, all right, I kind of zipped through the little demo here, but basically I'm going to keep in, um, very attentive to the diaphragm line, the anatomical waistline, the heel line, just because I can break down my anatomy with those three lines with the help of my five zones. And then the left foot's going to correlate with what's happening on her left body and the right on the right. So if she has two kidneys, right, most people do, not everybody does, yep. you could find those right here. And then if you have one removed, you might actually find that there's a lot of scar tissue, and you might find that it's really taut in there. And once you start asking questions, they'll be like, uh, no, I had one removed. And you can usually tell something went on in that area. But they don't remove the nerves. So if they had something like the gallbladder, that's my favorite one out there. Aha, I don't have that gallbladder no more. I say, well, <laughs> You know, <laughs> there's still going to be a lot of sensation there. So, but, um, so they technically will have like the phantom organ pain, you know, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and if they have a sharp area where, you know, they have a knee issue um, that you want to address, but they're just, it's fine, you're finding that it's too painful for them on here, 
again, you would resort to that um, that hand or that wrist. You know, um, it's not a very difficult application. It's just something that you have to work your strength up for. You know, you could injure yourself doing this if you're doing a lot of that saddle the saddle joint. Um, but you know, people text nowadays and they play the Wii games. Well, the Wii games kind of that doesn't work anymore for us. But um, back when they had like the Nintendo little controllers. Those are thumb working exercises. You can go and send someone home and say, go do this for a weekend. You know, it's kind of fun. And with um, pregnancy, I mean, I know back in the day in the 90s, they're really cautious of that and stuff, but it seems like they got more relaxed over the years, have they? Yes and no. Uh, you don't want to be touching the whole reproductive area and stimulating anything. I mean, obviously there's kidneys one, there's meridian points on the feet too everywhere in the body, but you want to stay away from kidney one, and you want to stay away from spleen six. Um, spleen 10 is higher up on the knee. You wouldn't get there with reflex, but you also want to be very, very careful about um, aborting the baby if it's in this, um, you know, that first 12 weeks, or stimulating labor if it's too early. So you really do want to be cautious about staying away from the uterine and the ovary reflexes along with the fallopian tubes here. Um, but, you know, I also have the labor doula stuff in me, so if they are wanting a babyotomy massage and I want to incorporate a lot of that reflex, you're darn right I'm going to do it. It will help stimulate some of that stuff to start opening up. Okay. And then, oh. uh, and then also with the hands too and stuff, I mean, be a little cautious of those areas too with the pregnancy and large intestine four and stuff. And Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. All those pericardium six right through here, if they're nauseous, you want to teach them that spot, and you know if they don't want to buy the little C bands that have a magnetic piece on there, um, you can really teach someone how to not hate the pregnancy. <laughs> so yeah. <much. laughs> <Inside>. Yeah. <laughs> I've been right through here too, because that can help stimulate the cervix from opening, or yeah, from opening. Um, but it also can alleviate some headaches. So you, there's a fine point. You do want to know your anatomy, and you do want to know your reflex spots. Yeah. And, and then um, afterwards, I mean, do you want them just to uh, um, stay relaxed for a few minutes in the chair, or is it okay for them to get up and go right away afterwards, too? Or I think it's definitely okay for them to get up right away. Um, I like to challenge them to walk. You know, if it's a demo, I'm only doing one foot, obviously. And a lot of times I'll tell them, hey, go ahead and take a couple of steps and open up this cream. Um, I will tell them to go ahead and uh, step around a little bit and before they can put their shoes on, play with the idea that, you know, it feels like you're walking on a pillow, it feels like you're walking on a cloud, and then, you know, don't go shoe shopping because it does move all that lymph right up the, um, you know, to the leg and it starts flushing out those toxins and it actually does shrink the foot. You can see the tendons more so, um, a lot of before and after shots in my work and uh, it's amazing. But you can find, you can see, wow, I have ankles again. Those cankles are gone, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, you, you can feel the looseness of your shoes if they have laces. And it's, it's really cool to see that stuff happen so immediately. And I've, I, I've even seen some reflexology um, where they'll actually massage your foot while you're standing up. And your, your foot is plant, planted on the floor and stuff like that. So do you get into that realm too at all? I don't. Um, the only time I'm doing something when they're standing is, um, you know, assessing their body, their gait. But, um, you know, there's lots of different ways to do lots of different body work. So I would not condone it by any means. Yeah. How's that feel? Freezing bond by top. Okay. <laughs> So what do you think? People will be interested in trains? Oh, big time. Especially, again, there's a lot of schools that don't have the training for reflexology, so I think there's a definitely a need for it out there. Absolutely. And the school that I went to is one of the few where they actually had a specialty in reflexology if you wanted, even a specialty in chair massage if you wanted to, too. But it was um, um, basic massage, um, chair massage, and reflexology, those three options, or you could just do it all in one just with the regular massage and stuff. Yeah, and there's some schools out there that have like the medical track, the energetic track, and then the um, clinical track. Yeah. 
that's more, you know, in a different state, but um, our school really hones in on, you know, the multiple disciplines of different um, or different modalities, and you get your your basic massages, and then you get a little bit of the continuing education classes that are out there as far as your core um, recommendation or their core program, like the myofascial release. We teach the lymphatic drainage, Thai massage, uh, cranial sacral therapy. You know, on top of the regular sports, deep tissue, Swedish, and that kind of thing. A hot stone. This is a nice way. Oh, we didn't bring that in. Um, you could actually, you know, I'm kind of retracting on my answer when you said, do you incorporate uh, other modalities within my reflex? Absolutely. Hot stone massage, you can do that. You can do the, the cold stones as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things. The sports stretches and stuff that you would incorporate in the legs and the feet. Myofascial release would be a good one for plantar fasciitis. Um, so I'm going to actually have to retract on that answer and say, yes, I do. Okay, I'll go back in the video and edit it. <laughs> no. But I do want to say thank you for having us on. I really appreciate the opportunity with you and Bon Vital, and uh, I know that you're going to keep going up and up and up. So. Well, thanks. <laughs> and I, um, you need to get start teaching those classes a lot more. So that's, that's my main goal is I'm going to keep pushing you. <laughs> but yeah I, I do have a family at home and stuff like that too and I love teaching so it's not going to go to the wayside but it's how do I incorporate and keep balance you know yep exactly so. and what's the best way for people to get a hold of you once you start offering the classes then well we're already offering the classes but it's just local um, they have to come to me I'm not traveling right now but that will probably change probably within the next year um, they can get a hold of me, either on my cell phone number, which is 612-702-1338, or they can get a hold of me, um, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Facebook, Body Rhythms um, Massage, and uh, address, it's body underscore rhythms, R-H-Y-T-H-M-S, at hotmail.com. Um, if you Google Westology, I'll in so you find body rhythms pop up. So if rhythms spelled wrong, they can just Google reflexology in Monticello, Minnesota. Okay. But I'm also available from the school too. So if you want to find me at the msbcollege.edu website, follow the great contact me. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Selena, and thank you very much for your um, massage student to be the guinea pig there. <laughs> A whole bunch of students have been watching this whole deal, so we're going to yeah. try and. Real quick. Okay. <laughs> seconds, right? Yep. Okay. So, go ahead and say your name. Hi, I'm Riley. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Randy. Lisa. Did I miss someone? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we had a whole gang ready for you and excited for you, and I'm sorry about the technical issues in the beginning. Well, it's fine. <laughs> I can't believe how well they're behaved. <laughs> I have a in the back. No. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you bribe them with? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right. Well, thank you again, Ryan. It was a pleasure, and we so appreciate it. Yep. Thank you very much, and thanks for everybody for tuning in. All right. Yeah. See you later. Bye.